We have an interesting menu today, which draw from many parts of the world. We have a squid salad to start, inspired by a Vietnamese chef friend of ours, been with a terrific cook, and my wife is kind of addicted to that salad. Then we have a bitoshki, which is really Russian. Finally, we have a cookie horn with fruit, more in the style of Nouvelle Cuisine. And what I want to start with is those squid. And as you can see here, the squid are not clean. You can buy them clean just as I have them here, though they are tiny squid. The way to clean them is just to pull out the head this way. And now that head, you see the eye, we just cut under the eye to get the tentacle. And usually here on that part, there is a little lob which may come out, which is the beak, which you remove also. That's about all we do to that. You put it in water to clean. The rest of the body, there is a, what we call the pan, which is like a piece of, uh, of plastic almost, you know, here. It looks like a piece of plastic. The pan, P-E-N, is the cartilaginous bone. And then we remove the skin, which, as you see, slide very easily. Although I'll tell you, in, uh, in Greece and other part of the world, very often they don't clean it as much as we do here. Then we empty the gut inside. This, in turn, you have to wash it, as we have done here. And for that particular recipe, we cut it into a ring about one inch. This is as for the tentacle, you leave them as they are, you know. And this is what we are going to use for our salad. Uh, the important part here is that we're going to blanch this in boiling water, and we're going to cook it very, very little. The water is boiling here, and what I want to do is just to put it in there and stir it a little bit, just for the, just for the pieces of... Uh, of, uh, of squid to firm up, you know, but you don't want to cook them long as they would get tough, so it barely comes back to a boil. And during that time, what I want to show you is the rest that is the sauce for it. And we have an interesting mixture from garlic here to Thai pepper. Those Thai pepper are very, very hot. I have lime juice. I have lime here. We have coriander or cilantro or Japanese parsley, Chinese parsley, it goes under many different type of names. Mint, we use a lot of mint in there. Finally, the gnoc mam, the gnoc mam, which is a traditional Vietnamese fish sauce, and a bit of sugar in it. So we're going to mix this uh, into that bowl, with a couple of tablespoons of this. See, the interesting part of that recipe is that there is no fat, nothing in it. Usually in those type of recipe, we put a lot of olive oil or other type of oil. Here there is nothing, so it's a very lean recipe. The, the squid itself, you know, of any type of fish, it's quite high. It's high in omega-3, which is the, the type of uh, fish oil, which is good for cholesterol. On the other hand, however, the, um, the squid itself is not that low in cholesterol. It's higher about 200 milligram per uh, three ounces. So it is higher than scallop, for example, which would be very, very low, but it's still good. Now those Thai paper are very, very hot, you know? But you know, when I deal with paper like that, very often I touch them and touch the point of my tongue to find out how hot they are. This one is hot because sometimes, you know, you have a serrano or one of those paper and it's actually not very hot. You think it is, and the next time it kind of blow your mind, so you do have to test it a little bit. We have a bit of sugar in there. The lime juice and a lot of mint, you know, a lot of mint and the hotness, you know, of the paper and the coolness of the mint. And again, that mix with the cilantro or Chinese parsley, as I say, there is a different type of name. Now, if you don't like it, you can omit this. But the combination is absolutely wonderful here. Okay, so that, what we have here, as you can see, a lot of herbs. And finally, into this, we put thinly sliced onion. I have a cup of thinly sliced onion here. My grain, and that's about it. I want to get to my uh, squid here which have been cooking at least as much as they could. They could even be cooked a bit less. As I said, it barely comes back to a boil. Then we combine it here, and that we're going to stir together. It should marinate, you know, a little bit, develop some taste. But this is a really addicting salad, you know? So here we have it here. I'm gonna clean up 
my mess, always clean up in the kitchen, make my wife happy. When I do a lot of cooking at home, often I am just by myself in the kitchen and I clean as I go along, but I have no choice. This I can put away now. And what we want to do is to serve the salad. So we can serve that on nice green, as I have here, you know, which would come out very good. Here we are. And that in the center of it. Beautiful squid salad. And as you see, there isn't that much squid. I mean, I could put more in the mixture here, but they are really wonderful this way. And now, what we want to do, this is our first course, we want to start working on the main course, which is a bitoshki. Bitoshki, basically, it's, it's, uh, it's Russian, and the bitoshki means basically ground meat in Russian. And we're going to do a sauce, and a sauce, I'm going to grate some fresh horseradish here. I have the horseradish here. In my garden it grows, I peel the end of it. And that is uh, absolutely terrific, you know. So what I have here just ground a little bit of it, the part which I, uh, I clean up. And uh, I can smell it, you know. I mean, it just, uh, you can feel it, you know. This is, of course, absolutely terrific. I mean, if you put your nose on top of it, it can make you cry. So strong. So this is going to be for the sauce for the bitoshki. The bitoshki is going to be a mixture of ground meat, which I have here. Oh, I need my food processor again. I want to do some parsley in it. You know, a base. About as much parsley as this. A couple of cloves. Uh, I have three cloves of garlic here, and we're going to chop that first. It doesn't matter if I have a tiny bit of uh, a tiny bit of horseradish in the bottom, you know. All those tastes are going to go together well. I have this here, and what we, we do with this, a bit, maybe a bit more, I'm going to put some bread into this, fresh bread, you know, fresh bread crumb. To make fresh bread crumb, don't use the dry bread, it makes different. And what we do there, so I have a nice mixture of bread, parsley, and garlic which I have here. And this is going to be like a binding agent, you know, for the bitoshki. Look at that, it's beautiful. So we want to soak that with a bit, and I have a, a bit of, of a skim milk here. I want to soak this. And uh, after that, mix the veal. You can see that veal is very, very lean here, and that's what I want, a very lean veal. Into this, I have a pound of veal, a dash of salt. Usually in those things, you know, you put uh, eggs and all that. We're not putting any eggs here because we're putting the bread and the thing. So, and the onion. I have chopped onion in there, of course. A lot of chopped onion in Russian cooking. And what I want to do with this now is to mix it and shape it, you know. So, the best way is to mix it with your hand, remember. You're alone in your kitchen, and it's perfectly fine, providing you uh, clean your hand after. And also the fact that this is going to be steam at very high temperature, it's going to cook, so it's perfectly fine. So you mix that thoroughly. You see the, the, the bread in it, which is soaked in milk. If you want to avoid milk for some reason, you can soak it with a little bit of chicken stock or something else, you know, or water, really. Uh, this is, you know, the classic mixture for home cooking that you do when you stuff a uh, tomato or when you do different type of thing, that type of binding. So here what we have, we have four here that we can mold, you know, by hand like this. We have four. I think the first one I did a bit big. I think I need a bit back. To have it approximately, remember I have a pound, so that's four ounces of meat per person, four ounces of meat per person, plus then the bread, the onion, that type of thing. So those things should be about close to seven ounces, six and a half, seven ounces a piece. And, you know, again, we used to saute that type of thing. Here what we're going to do is to, uh, if you want to do it ahead, you can cover it this way. 
What we are going to do here is actually to steam it. Let me rinse my hand a little bit here. Okay, and we're going to steam it in a steamer that is on top of water that we have right here. The water is boiling. So I want to put that directly in there, and that will take about 10 minutes to boil, you know. And while this is cooking, we want to start the sauce of the bitoshki. And the sauce, again, Russian style, is going to be made of onion, which I have here. We have yogurt. I have, I have yogurt here. I have again cilantro. I have mushroom and chicken stock. So what we want to do first is saute the onion a little bit with a little dash of uh, oil. I have rapeseed oil here, which often people call canola oil. So we want to saute this. And, but remember that with a sauce, as we are doing here, a sauce made with yogurt, the yogurt and the cilantro is going to be used at the end, otherwise it would break down. The mushroom, however, we put it now into what we call a julienne, that is, you cut the mushroom in slice, stagger those slices together and, and slice them, and that's about it. I have plenty here anyway. What I want to put it in there, saute the mushroom also. The mushroom are going to render some liquid. I have about that much. A dash of salt on top of this. Remember that this is this and this is going to be for our sauce at the end, you know, but not now I have the grated off radish and so forth. So now what I want to do in there, saute a little bit, is to put chicken stock, to cook it for a few minutes with the chicken stock. And while this is cooking two, three minutes, let's check out the patty. Yeah, the patty are doing fine, cooking like this. And now I want to show you how to use herb. In the summer, I have a lot of herb in my garden. And uh, it's so expensive in winter. So I kind of take advantage in the summer to use those herbs. As you can see here, from thyme to, to, uh, to uh, uh, basil, of course, here, and chives. I want to show you what to do with the basil because the, the, the basil is the hardest thing to do. You know, this is the thing which gets black. But it won't get black. You see, I have boiling water here. If I put that in boiling water, to blanch it, that is, it would get wilted right away, you know. So you leave it like 10 seconds in boiling water, it's fine. Then you cool it off right away in cold water. If you don't do that, it's going to get yellow. But see, by doing that, of course, it goes down a lot. I mean, the volume disappeared, like the, the eight or 10 cup that you, you add amount to nothing. But the difference is that, the difference is that it's going to be uh, staying green the whole winter. So what we do here is to cut it into pieces then put it into a small processor like this, you know, with a little dash of oil. Little dash, this is not a pesto. A dash of salt, you put that on top, you make a puree out of it. And that puree here, now what we do, we put it in package you know, in the freezer, and that stays beautifully nice and green. You know, I have a little piece of plastic wrap here. What you do, you take a package of that, like one tablespoon, because at that point it's pretty potent, you know. You fold it. You put a label on top, you know, we put a label on top, whatever, this is basil or parsley or whatever, and those are frozen, come out of the freezer, and in winter you can use them for a lot of things. And now let's see if our sauce is ready. We want to finish the sauce. That is, put horseradish in there, which I put here. Yogurt and cilantro. And this is it now. You know, I, I have to reduce the cooking because I don't want it to boil after I put, I don't want it to go above 160 degrees after I put the, uh, the yogurt, otherwise it's going to break down. And now let's see 
those here, those here are not quite cooked. I have some which are cooked underneath here. And I will take them. See, those have been cooking long enough. Now those are nice and firm. You take them directly from here. Doing there. You want to take your sauce on top. You know, a very flavorful type of sauce. And actually, you know, I can see that that sauce eat up a bit too fast. I should have taken that out and it had a tendency to break down. But it'd be fine, you know. A bit of cilantro on top, if you want, just for color. And this is our Bitoshki man course for our Russian mixture. We are a Vietnamese first course, or oriental at least, an interpretation. We are a Bitoshki, I mean a Russian type of thing with a sour cream and so forth. And now we're going to have a dessert which is much more in the style of nouvelle cuisine very light and all that. It's actually a cookie, and those cookies can be shaped around those like horn of plenty or in a different type of mold, you know, to, so that they are used as a receptacle. So you can put fruit or ice cream or whatever in it. We are going to put fruit in it. And it's a very easy batter to do. The first thing that you do is to put uh, the butter in there and the sugar. So I have uh, two tablespoons of, uh, of butter and a quarter of a cup of sugar. And uh, I think I put the egg white in there also, one egg white. And then we process this. On this side, it works much better. For like uh, four or five seconds, you know, until it's done. Then we add a little dash of vanilla, like uh, half of a teaspoon, and two tablespoons of flour, you know. And that's it. This makes four, I mean, I can do even easy six cookies with that, six large cookies. So it is not that much. You would, of course, if you do that for Christmas or some other thing, you probably would want to do a larger batch, you know, of this. Actually, a larger batch is going to work even better in your food processor because when you have only a very tiny amount, you know, sometimes it is difficult to, to do it well. So get rid of this and this, and I'm going to put this in there. Okay. So this is my batter, and that, of course, can be done ahead, but you don't, you don't want really to refrigerate this because you want it to keep it soft, you know, so you can use it in a very special way that I'm going to show you how to use, you know. So here we are. Be sure to pick up all of it here. And I even mix it a little bit here if I feel that it's not mixed enough. It's well homo homogenized. Yeah. Okay. So now, I put a cookie sheet in the freezer, you know, and I am, I have it here, and the cookie sheet is ice cold. This is a non-stick pan. If you use a non-stick pan, you don't have to put anything on it. If you don't use a non-stick pan, you will have to butter, do something in it. Now, if it's ice cold like that, that the whole idea, you take a brush, you know, to brush it on top of it like this, you see? And we can brush that into about six inch, six inch thickness. That's it. Now you see I have another one here. If you don't have that in the freezer, it's harder to spread it, you know, but now it makes it very easy. The reason is that the thing is ice cold, you know. So I have two large ones which could be shaped, you know, then you can have some smaller one. You know, that you small round one if you want like this. Uh, use it as regular cookie. Actually, you know, you can also mold them with a spoon. But often when we do smaller one like that, we use them eventually as a, um, as a sandwich, you know. Then I can do a long one like this also, as you can see. And it's fine. You know, any type of shape, and that could be rolled like a... a you know, a swirl or something like this. You can see here that I have basically half of my cookie mixture left, so I have quite a lot of cookie. This, uh, I'm go not going to put it in the oven because I have some in the oven that I want to show you, which should be close to be ready now. Yes, I think those are about right 
when they have that color, you want to use them right away, you see? And if I lift up the end of it with a fork, when they are still, they are very soft, you see? I could lift it up, put it directly on this and roll it into a cornucopia. Now look at that, okay. Now I have another one here. If it's still soft enough, you know, it goes pretty fast. I can put it inside to mold it into an inside mold. This one here, which stick to that, I could mold it on the outside. This, you know, look there. Now within minutes after, not even minutes, you know, those things are going to get hard, and this is it. But you know, look at this one that I could roll also in the other way, it's already getting hard. But if this, this get hard, all I have to do is to take that tray, put it back in the oven, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, it's softened again, then you can take it out. You see this one, up, oh, it's crunchy already. And very good. So, I have those in there. What we want to do now is a sauce. And the sauce is made with different type of fruit. There you can choose whatever we want, whatever you want. I have lemon juice here that I put and a tablespoon of sugar, which doesn't want to come out. Here it is. And with that, we put banana. The banana have a tendency to discolorate, you know, so in the citric acid here, in the citric acid, it's not going to discolorate. Always when you cut a banana, eat a piece. It's good. Okay, I have a couple of banana. You can put those. I have, of course, a lot of uh, red berry, you know, which are good in there. Can keep whole one. And dry fruit, it's always an interesting thing to do dry fruit and fresh fruit together. I have dry fig here, you know, prevalent. And then you toss together, you have the nice acidulated taste, you know, of, uh, of the fruit, which is good. So what we do here, we can do two different one. Here, you can have one, you see this is hard already and use that other horn of plenty which comes out of this. You can use another one of the receptacle here. We could have uh, yogurt, we have a little bit here. You can put a little bit of yogurt inside if you want, like you want to put ice cream, and the fruit on the outside. The fruit, oh, this one should be, I'm sorry, this way, so it kind of imitate the fruit coming out, you know, of your horn of plenty here. You know, a whole array of different type of fruit. On this one here, it could be on top of the fruit and some of it as decoration around, you know? And then you can put a little bit of a mint if you want for decoration, like around like this. A beautiful, light, elegant dessert, which is going to go after the bitoshki, which are pretty rich, you know? This will be Absolutely beautiful. Another an added thing, if you want, you can even put a bit of powdered sugar. And you see the powdered sugar, we put it even on the plate itself to give a whole kind of a dust cloud. And this is our beautiful dessert for today. We have a really interesting menu today, a real melting pot. This is what I am. This is what we are in America, a melting pot. And it has less than 30% of its calorie through fat. So it's very light and elegant. Of course, we have to start with that squid salad, which is really spicy, and that cool of the, the mint, you know, with the hotness of the paper, you'll get addicted to it just like I am. And the bitoshki, Russian style, a bit sour, and the cilantro, I mean, we did that, remember, with yogurt, even though it's a cream sauce, it looks very good. The, a salad, of course, and the beautiful dessert with the crunchy horn, and with that, what can work better than a Sauvignon Blanc from the Napa Valley? Nice, fruity, crisp, you know, it's aromatic wine without any pretension, it's great. I'm sure you're going to love that menu. I really enjoy making it for you. Try it at home, you will enjoy it. Happy cooking. <laughs>